Good morning everybody, Ryan here. Welcome back to How Farms Work. Today we are heading down to Travis's place to seed down the lower strips and then the smallest strips down there as well as the waterways. So we've been putting in a lot of waterways this year because in previous years uh, a lot of what we've sown down with our hay and waterways both have not taken because of all the rain that we've gotten. I hope I'm not jinxing us by speaking too soon, but the weather this spring doesn't seem to be too bad. Um, we are getting out and getting tillage done right now, which is fantastic. But uh, we'll see what the end of the month and May brings to us. So I'm heading down to Travis's now. I just loaded up with seed and fueled up. So I was coming down here with the 4020 last night and I went to make a left hand turn uh, so I could pull into the driveway. Now I think something that everybody should recognize, um, know how to use as well as interpret is hand signals. They are very, very important. And this isn't the first time it's happened. I think raising awareness to what hand signals are and how to interpret them is something that kind of needs to be pushed a little bit more, um, especially with tractors, because there's a lot of older tractors that aren't equipped with turn signals. Um, luckily the 7600 as well as the Kuhn seed drill are fully outfitted with four-way flashers and the turn signals do work on both of them. Um, however, on the 4020, it just has four-way flashers. So whenever you go to make a turn in the 4020, if you're making a left-hand turn and you're behind the vehicle that's making a left-hand turn, I'm gonna reverse this for you guys so it's easier for you to understand from, from behind, is if your left hand is like this, that is a left-hand turn. If it is a 90-degree angle like this, that would be a right hand turn. So if you're, you're gonna be doing this from the front now, but this is what it looks like from the front. Um, that way you have your right hand to kind of control the wheel and you can look back like this. Uh, it's very important that you know how to use and rec recognize when a farmer is using those. Uh, if it looks like a farmer is kind of lazily sticking his hand out the window, just to try to catch a breeze, uh, he might actually be making a left hand turn. So it's just something to be very cautious of because last night when I was coming into here, um, they could see my hand sticking out the window. I don't know whether they just didn't know what I, if I was giving the signal or they didn't even know how to recognize it or what, but right as I was going into my turn, um, they blew right past me. So it's, some, it's things like that that cause farmers to be very cautious when they're going to make turns and it causes me to kind of start my turn very, very early, if, as soon as possible actually. So I'll just start kind of slowly making my way into the oncoming lanes as long as I'm sure that there's no oncoming traffic because the slower you make those turns, um, I think it's more reaction time for the people behind you who don't interpret or can't see um, or don't understand your turn signals. So just a little food for, food for thought for you guys. Keep an eye out for those left and right hand turn signals. Stay safe. Travis came through and scraped a bunch of dirt down by the highway here pull it back up onto the road because it kept eroding, especially the last year. So I'm gonna run through it, pass or two, pass and a half of the good seed drill. First order of business is seeding down the field road out here. Probably gonna do three passes, 30 feet. One straight up the middle just for good measure. I'm aiming for the center of the field gate on top of the hill. Hopefully I'll get it a little bit straighter than the path I took getting back to the buildings last night. <laughs> the first waterway that we're doing it's just a small triangle piece pretty much the whole thing you see tilled up here is getting seated down because we had some pretty nasty ditches right here last year I've been running the tractor around 1500 rpm I found that's a good power point where I've got the power that I need to get up the hills it doesn't really slug down much and I don't want to be running at full throttle because you don't need to be wasting fuel I've been running five to six miles an hour. 
on the good going stuff when there's a lot of turns involved I've been going about four and a half. As you seed, you're going to come across different soil conditions, and I'm out here checking it just to make sure that everything's looking good. And I'm looking at it, what I've done so far looks fairly good. However, I'm looking at the seed firmers here, and I think that I need to put some more pressure down because the ground down here is a lot more clotty. So I might be putting the seed down, but unless there's the pressure actually closing the row, um, really it's just not really covering the seeds up much at all you can see one right there it's probably hard for you guys to see but I can look in between the different rows here and try to spot some of the seeds that have fallen down I can see a couple in this row I'm gonna take out a couple of those spacers probably two more on the front to get those coulters down and then probably at least one in the back that's probably just where I'll start is take one of these larger ones out on the front on each side so there's a seed right there now I wouldn't be too upset if the rain that they're calling for this afternoon actually comes through doesn't look like we're going to be getting anything right now. I mean, it looks like a nice day out, but a nice shower to get the soil wet to kickstart those seeds. I would be all right with that. more pressure on those firmers it's doing a better job at breaking up those larger clods and making a consistent seed bed there there's one there's a seed in there it's really just under the surface which is exactly what we want some of you might be wondering why I've got the coulters all the way in the ground I guess they're not all the way but they're in the ground um, even though we're in tilled ground. Well, the thing is that I set the seed drill to give the most consistent result across everything that we sow or that we seed. And uh, I found that by keeping the coulters in the ground, not too deep, but just enough will get us where we want on, on everything. Um, unless I'm doing like reseeding and stuff, then I try to put them a little bit, a little bit more pressure on them. But as it's set up now, I think this is good. I'm gonna probably keep running it as is. There's another one right there. Just on, right there, just under the surface. The seed is gonna be dropping out between these two discs and the alfalfa seed, which is in the smaller boxes, we're not putting any of that down today. Um, but when we are, it's cut, it'll come down through this tube.
just accidentally dumped off these bags onto the ground. I had them sitting up in there, but it looks like when I went around this turn, they slid off the other side and I had to swing around and come back to them. I have mixed feelings about these bags. Um, I haven't seen how the seed inside performs yet. Um, I'll find out that in a couple weeks, I guess. But the bags, I have mixed feelings on because they do leave uh, bits and pieces of the bags themselves inside the hopper. And that can cause issues when they slip down into your meters and get tangled up in there. So I have mixed feelings about that. Um, we were picking bits and pieces out the other day. Um, so it's good to kind of sort your hand through and pull out all the little bits and pieces of the bag out. However, I do give these bags a 10 for ruggedness because even going 55 miles an hour down the road and they fall out and lay on the side of the road, they don't burst open. How I know this, I won't say. But uh, at least they don't burst open in situations like this. Saves you a lot of seed. That was what I was talking about. That looks a lot like rain back there to me. Hopefully I can get this done before the rain moves in. They are calling for an 80% chance tonight, so usually that means it's gonna rain pretty good. Wish me luck, I'm gonna need it. I wanna finish this, at least this little bit here. Not a whole lot left. I just finished seating what is up here, uh, up front at Travis's place. Now, I don't have enough seed to go back into the 40. So I'm thinking I'll probably go to the farm, get three bags. No more than three bags should get me by. There's just a couple waterways back there I need to hit. So I'm gonna take this back to the buildings, hop in the truck and go grab a refill. And that'll get me through as long as the rain holds off a little bit longer. Um, it has been raining, but it hasn't rained enough to really set us back. We're spreading down here with both of the coon spreaders. Uh, we were cleaning up this pile up here on top of the hill. So now, ironically, we're using a coon cedar to put grass back down on it. So, I'm gonna start right here. Well, we finished just in time. Because now the rain has truly started. I literally just finished like 30 seconds ago. Gonna head back to the farm, back this in the shed, close the shed door, call it a night. Where's my boy? Where's my boy? I don't see him. Rocket. Rocket. Look at that, it's a rainbow. Fired up the truck, rocket came running. Now that we're done with the drill, have you guys ever wondered how farmers clean out their seed drills? Well, today we're gonna do it because the grass seed that's in here is worth about $150 a bag. So I'd rather uh, save that for a rainy day, if you know what I mean. We've got our handy dandy shop vac here. Got it all plugged in. 
Now, you might want to check to make sure that your shop vac is empty first because that could really ruin your day if you just, you know, waste about 50 pounds of seed. So we're going to go ahead and turn this on, keeping our face away because it's about to get dusty. <laughs> It has now been a week since we seeded the ryegrass, and as you can see, it is coming up very nice. I think that the coon seed drill did a really good job at putting the seed down consistently. Uh, I would say this is probably one of the more consistent jobs that we've ever done, <laughs> uh, mostly just because of the seeder. We've never had a seeder this nice. We've, we've always just traditionally used a John Deere B-series drill, and that's not very consistent at all. But I'm looking forward to seeing how the seed progresses and how it comes along. Um, overall, I would say that the seed drill did a very good job. And um, we'll just have to wait and see how the ryegrass progresses along. But there were a couple spots I found that I missed. I took the broadcast seeder out and I just broadcasted. And um, that has not come up yet. But uh, I had to wait and see what isn't coming up with the ryegrass. So you can just start to look across and start to roll the ryegrass. Um, it's looking very good. So this is good, what we're gonna be using for our feed. Uh, we went through and put all this down in our waterways and we reseeded this patch right by my house here uh, because we're gonna be using this for feed for the cattle. So now that we have all of the grass seeded, we can start focusing on planting. So keep an eye out. We're going to be starting with soybeans here very soon. Um, just kind of keep an eye out on our channel and uh, I'll keep you guys posted as things progress. So with that, that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching guys. Be sure to check out all of our other videos. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat for all the latest updates on what's going on around the Kister Farms. So anyway, I'll see you next time.